Paul gave me the idea at Valley Forge. We had a show at Valley Forge sometime shortly before that. He said he had an idea for this character. And the only direction he gave me on it is, he's the captain of the football team that steals everybody's girlfriend. So here I am standing at the, you know, the peak of this company. The fact that it's with Funk, uh, that A, he was as gracious as he was, as professional as he was, uh, to take the time to teach me how to be the heel that I would become. Uh, you know, when I first went to, be, to play that heel rule, my mentality was, well, just do the opposite of what a baby face does. And that is so not what a great heel does. You know, Shane, I'll tell you, Shane, oh, it's, uh, you know, he's got to be crazy. That's a Shane, you got to be crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Because you got to you got to be crazy. Crazy like a fox. When I first saw the character, I thought, this is dumb. You know, I, the, the old school purist in me said, you can't let a guy drink and go to the ring like that. And, you know, but boy, I got to tell you, I was dead wrong. An old friend of yours with bleach blonde hair. Uh, was particularly upset by this and made it known to anyone that would listen in WCW. I do remember that, as you say, it, uh, that, it, that it came, uh, but again, that's just typical dick, you know, and I'm not talking... Did, did you say Rick or Dick? <laughs> no, I, I said Dick. Oh, you said Dick. Yeah, I and said, I meant okay. to say Dick. It's so apropos and it fits so well. The way I was trained to come into the business, I was told, keep your mouth shut, your eyes and ears open pay attention. So the guy that I was paying attention to was him because that was the guy that I had hoped to be like one day. And uh, when I see him pulling his penis out in a bar full of kids, uh, you know, running up and down a hallway uh, like some fraternity boy at 46 years old, the world heavyweight champion uh, that represents a company. That was the type of stuff that we got away with not completely, obviously, with the fire incident that I'm sure you want to talk about, but they, uh, you know, the, the, those type of incidents that were literally one bad bounce of a chair off a rope, whatever, away from closing the company. Do you remember Paulie's reaction in the back as this is happening? Is he freaking yeah, out? Yes. Total swerve. To me, the ECW fans in that building should never have been caught off by any angle, wrestling angle. Because they had seen everything, they had, they, and they knew Paul's thinking. They knew that we, when they went left, we were going right. Sabu, prior to that match, had a, like, a, a base level mistrust of me. Todd and Joey were looking right at me, and Corluzo was looking straight ahead, and he had that look on his face. And that's when I, as I started going through the promo, as I'm doing the promo, I still don't know. You know, exactly, I, you know, I knew I was probably going to go that way, uh, probably from early in the week. But it wasn't until I went down to the list of names and the fans kept shouting out different names, and then I saw Corluza's face, and I said, oh, and they can all kiss my ass. Is it true that if WCW or Flair acknowledged this, Todd was prepared to book the Spectrum for a 60-minute Broadway for you and Rick? Oh. <laughs> There, 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 yeah, I, I will confirm something here that, that I was holding in, in check for my book.